How's it going? This is James from James Films, back with another asset add-on overview here. This time we're focusing on one from the creators at 3D Shaker. They're over on the Blender Market and they are fantastic. If you've not come across them before, which is hard to miss them uh, because they have almost 2,000 total assets and add-ons available here for you in the Blender Market. I've linked them in the description for you to check out. I definitely encourage you to check out some other ones. Specifically today, we're going to be going through the Shaker Trees Asset Pack, which is actually compatible with Ngon. This is a free add-on, if you're not familiar with this, from the uh, folks over at Polygon IQ. Uh, that actually has you uh, link directly. You can see it's a nice little asset browser uh, that allows you to link different asset packs if you have any of these from the Botanic, Material IQ, Traffic IQ, uh, Aquatic, and there's a new one that they have now. It's Internic <laughs> Interior Library. We can also see you've got some every motion ones and the shaker trees tree library so definitely encourage you to check that out it is a zero dollar purchase here so well worth uh, your investment of zero dollars uh, but today specifically we're going to be talking about shaker trees i'm going to walk through uh, some of the assets that i use quite a bit for my projects i've been working on a lot of fall scenes recently including uh, this one here that I'll drag into frame uh, this one all the trees you see here are from the shaker 3d uh, team their fall collection uh, so really a lot of fun to play around with those. So I'll show you a couple of those and how to kind of manage it in your scene. You have a couple different options to choose from. If you just want to see how they are, see how they work with your scenes, uh, there's a $2 starter pack that has just a couple assets here. You get five conifers, 10 deciduous trees, and three bushes. Um, I'm actually using the uh, full pack, which has everything uh, in 762 uh, models in total to be precise. Um, so definitely worth it. You can scroll through here to see all the ones that you have available to you. Uh, a lot of really good stuff here. And like I said, you'll see in just a sec, it integrates seamlessly with the Ngon library. So let me pull up Blender here. So I'm over in Blender now and you can see I've got Ngon set up here. And if you have the 3D Shaker asset library, the way you set these up, it's not like a traditional add-on where you'd go uh, to your... Um, install add-ons and you're installing it as an add-on it's an asset pack an asset library so you're going to actually have to link it as a file path to your blender uh, whichever blender version you're using so as opposed to installing here you can see a lot of my add-ons that i have available and typically you go install from disk uh, instead you know save it out uh, export it out or rather um, expand the zip file that it comes with and then go to file paths in your blender preferences and you can actually hit this plus icon here and this says add asset library. It allows you to link to a specific path on your local disk where your asset library is enabled. You see I have a couple other ones here as well from the 3D Shaker team. This is a really fun one, Blender Decoration and Furnishing. I can talk about these in a future video as well. They're more catered towards interior design, um, kind of smaller scale projects than the ones I'm working on here. You're gonna be working on like an interior of a building, uh, you know, a bedroom, uh, an office space. It's got a lot of really nice furniture. Um, so I'll talk about that one in a future video. But the one I set up is this Shaker Trees. And you can see it's got Ngon here in parentheses uh, because it's linked with my Ngon. You can see I linked the path on my local disk where it is. Uh, I have this blurred out, but that is where the path is linked. And so if I go over here now to Ngon, if you're not familiar with this, it's a very simple uh, interface. It has this button that you select here that says Browse Assets. And when you click on that, it says Select Area with Mouse. So you can click on any of your windows here that you have set up and it'll make that into your Ngon asset browser. I typically like to go with this one in the bottom left here. So if I just left click on this, it'll open up my asset browser. I'll just bring this up a bit more so you can see it. Um, and you can see I've got all of my assets here. I've got some traffic ones that are showing up right now. These are a lot of cool bikes and boats and stuff uh, from the Polygon IQ team. I've also got Botanic. You can see all of the different ones. And the way they've set these up, it's really nice because it's uh, categorized everything by type. So if you just want, you know, just the flowers, you can just click and filter by flowers. If you just want you know, summer variety of flowers, you can just click by that. So it's a really nice way to quickly filter through. They've done a really good job integrating that for your asset library. And if I go back now to shaker trees, they've done the same thing. Um, you can see they've split it up by coniferous trees, deciduous rocks and shrubs. And you also have your uh, variants here. You've got your autumn, winter, summer, spring, your seasons. And so for this specific project, I want to have a lot of fall assets that I want to use for my scene. So if I just hit autumn, it'll automatically filter all the assets that would be uh, from autumn so you're seeing a lot of the conifers obviously they're you know uh, like that all year round but i'm more so looking for these trees here and it's as simple as just hitting spawn model just left clicking on this and it adds it into your scene and also puts it into a collection called shaker underscore trees here it's for ease of access i've got some other junk in here now that i've been working with from other different things i've just kind of put in there as well but 
it puts this in and you can see the way it names it st um, shaker trees tree and then it gives you the specific name of this tree as well so if you know uh, what that is it's kind of helpful for you as organizing things and this is as, again as simple as just kind of scaling things down moving it around in your scene and i like to kind of keep up a render view here on the right or usually on my second monitor for now i have it here uh, so you can kind of see what i'm doing but it's very simple to just add these in you just seriously just bring them into your project they're pretty light overall so you can add a lot in pretty quickly and just kind of scale them and move them around in your scene and then i just kind of keep an eye on how they're looking overall in the project it's looking really nice it kind of brings them to life very quickly and I, I just kind of use these to fill out my my scene my backgrounds here and i also have some kind of cool falling leaves animations that i've added into this as well to really just kind of heighten that effect and really draw your eye to some of these really cool assets so it's super quick and easy to do this and like i said this is just scratching the surface of what they have available in their asset library there's so many different things that you can access and use um, this is just one of almost 2,000 that they have available in their uh, library to use but you can see it's just very quickly to just scroll through and find different ones that you want to use for your scene and i just usually experiment with some and just kind of see how they're playing with my scene lighting wise and one other thing to note um, what I really like to do with these as well is bring them out with some subtle lighting. So you can see they already look pretty good here the way I've set up my scene. But sometimes if things are kind of fading in the background of bigger scene, you can see it's getting a little bit dark over here. And I really like kind of bringing out the translucency a bit of these leaves. Uh, you can see if I show this final version here, you can see there's some nice kind of back lighting on these ones around the window. Um, you know, some of these ones kind of in the frame here, you've got some lights from kind of the main scene reflecting off them and bringing those leaves, uh, kind of making them pop a little bit more here. So in order to kind of do that, what I typically would do is uh, we can make a new collection here just to organize things as well. I'll go over to my main collection, hit the plus icon here, and this makes a new one. And it is, where is it? Collection 10. <laughs> Let's just call this lighting. And I also like to usually just give this a yellow color just so it pops a little bit easier for me to see. And so with that selected, I'm gonna hit shift A, and then I'm gonna bring in a light and a point light. And this spawns to my uh, cursor here. So I'm going to bring this up. You could see how that is affecting our scene. It's uh, pretty small now here. If I go over to the light properties, uh, you can see it's a uh, very small radius. I'm going to crank that radius up a bit to like one. And usually when I'm first testing with lights, I'll just kind of crank them up a lot just to see kind of how they're affecting overall the area and the light, the, the color rather that it's uh, throwing. So obviously I don't want this really bright white fluorescent. Instead, I kind of want something warmer, a little bit more orangish, reddish. So if I kind of bring this down, you can see I got this nice kind of orangish color. And you can see what it's doing for these leaves of the tree. It really makes it pop so much more. Uh, if I just turn this off, you can see what it looked like before. And now what it looks like, obviously that's a little bit too intense. Unless you did have a direct light source that was sitting right there. Um, it's not going to necessarily look like that. So a couple things to kind of note here. So first of all, I like to check on the soft fall off. Um, you can see what it does. Applies fall off to avoid sharp edges when the light ge geometry intersects with other objects. So you can see this is intersecting with this tree the way I have it here. And so you don't want that super harsh fall off. If I uncheck it, you can see what it looks like now. Uh, you can see this really harsh center, this core of the light, and then it just kind of goes off. And so when I put this on, keep an eye, watch this region right here. If I check that back on again, you can see it just kind of blends it in a little bit more. So it's not as harsh. So that's one thing uh, to definitely use. And I think this is a new feature in the recent blur, uh, versions of Blender. I don't remember seeing this in, in uh, 3.0, uh, 3. plus, whatever, those different versions. I'm using Blender 4.2, and so this is something I've noticed that's really nice. Another thing to keep an eye on uh, is the radius of your light as well. So the smaller the radius, uh, the much brighter it's going to be here. It's kind of more concentrated point. So you can see it's it's a lot brighter. It's kind of almost getting towards that really soft fall off again. It's almost kind of nullifying that. And the more you spread it out, obviously, the more spread out the light becomes um, throughout your scene. So usually if I'm kind of just trying to splash some light on a surface, I'll really crank that radius up, turn on that soft fall off as it's intersecting some of these objects and just have it kind of bring some pop to the leaves of things. So you can just see it just frames the scene really nicely. Um, maybe that's still a little bit too bright. We can kind of bring this uh, intensity down a little bit to something like 800. Uh, but you can see this looks fantastic already. And I maybe want to duplicate this to the other side. And usually there's a couple ways to do this. So you can just hit shift and D and this will just make a duplicate that you can use uh, to kind of pull around your scene. And if you don't like this, uh, you can kind of adjust its individual properties. But if you know that this is uh, specifically a light you want to have kind of duplicated at the same exact intensity, the same as like color radius, 
What I often like to do is just do linked duplicates. So I'll hit Alt and D instead of Shift D. And then I can bring this over here. And then now anytime I make a change to either one of these, it'll affect both of them. So if I crank this up to like 2500 or something crazy, you could see it affects both of those lights. If I bring it down to three, it affects both of those lights. So this is just if you already know that this is a specific property, a specific light that you know is locked in at that exact value, you can do this so then you don't have to change every single light individually. I'll do this for situations like this. Like I said, when I'm lighting these trees or if I'm, I'm putting light in like a pool or a river where the lighting is going to be consistent throughout um, because it's kind of treating it as if it's the same light right all throughout this pool. I'll do that as well. However, like I said, if you just notice like all of a sudden I'm seeing that this is a little bit too hot on this right side here. If I want to bring that down, it's going to affect both of them. So that's something to keep in mind. You would have to just go back and, and just duplicate this one. And now you can see I can adjust the individual properties of this one. Let's bring it down to 250. So that looks a lot nicer. I also try when I'm doing my lighting to match lighting in my scene as well. So you can see I've got all these different lanterns and things kind of placed around the scene here. I try to match uh, the point lights to where those lights are placed in the scene as well because it will draw your eye in a little bit more and splash a little bit more light than otherwise uh, there would be in there. So if I bring this up kind of a little bit more here, you know, I can kind of splash that a little bit more in the building from this lamp and also have it affecting the top of that tree a bit more. So that's just something to keep in mind. That's just something fun to experiment with and work with too. And you'll notice another part of my scene here too, I've got some rocks in these. These are uh, actually photo scan these ones, but if I uncheck these filters, I can go and just search by rocks. And there's some other rocks that they have in here too, which are nice. Um, there's also, like I said, all kinds of little shrubs and things. So sometimes I'll use these just to kind of scatter throughout the scene to bring uh, a, a nice little um, details to some of the bottom elements here. So if you look kind of at this final render, I've got these kind of shrubs and stuff scattered around here too. So I'll usually go and um, put some of those in into the uh, kind of the bottom part of the scene uh, to kind of bring things in. And so they've got a lot of other ones. I'll kind of walk through some of these other ones that I use quite a bit too. I really like a lot of their uh, hydrangea and the rhododendron bushes that they have uh, for my spring renders. I'll use those quite a bit. I really like these uh, pine shrubs as well. They look really nice kind of for Greek or, you know, Mediterranean environments. They look really fantastic. They also have a lot of different um, bigger bushes and, and kind of things that you'd see more like topiary uh, type bushes. Um, these are really cool too, these big uh, shrub trees. I've used these in a couple of my uh, spring renders recently. Uh, it just comes together really nice. And then also, like I said, they've got some bigger trees too. So when you're really trying to fill out your scene, you've got all different varieties. You got your, you know, your fall or your spring ones, you know, your summer, uh, your winter. And it's just really easy to play around with these and have all different seasonal ones. The winter ones look pretty cool too. They've got kind of like a frost effect to it. You can see this kind of snowy effect as if there's snow collecting on the branches. Um, so as I kind of move a little bit more into winter where I live, I'm getting ready to kind of use a lot more of these in my scenes too. So I'm very excited to start experimenting a bit more uh, with those. But for now, it's fall. Uh, the leaves are still mostly on the trees here. We're starting to kind of change a bit more into orangish colors. So I'm dipping really deep into the inspiration here for my fall renders here and using a lot of these really cool trees for my scenes. So once again, I'll just go back to their page here. Uh, one more time, this is the 3D Shaker. I again encourage you to check this out if you just wanted to experiment a little bit and see if this would work for your specific scenes. You can just do the starter pack. Uh, you could do the light one, it has a little bit more. And if you really want to go crazy, you can do the full asset pack as well. And again, if I go to their page too, they have a lot of these things as bundles. I encourage you to do these just because they're obviously more cost effective if you get something as a collection. But if you're just looking for a specific asset, like you can also do that here too. They just sell like, you know, a collection of three bushes that you can get here or, or creeping plants um, or, you know, other things like conifers here. You can just get a collection of them. So if you're just looking for a specific object for your scene, you know, sometimes when I'm doing a specific client project, uh, you know, or a personal project and I just need like a palm tree or something like that and I don't need like a whole collection, I'll just search just for that and you could just download those specific things. you got a nice like urban environment pack here too. And these are obviously a lot cheaper if you're just trying to save a little bit of money and just need a couple than kind of a full pack too. And again, I'll link all of these in the description um, for you to check out and peruse at your leisure. But definitely encourage you to check out their other stuff too. I'll do another video uh, doing more of an interior design scene and using and leveraging a lot of the different assets that they have available in their collections too. Uh, but for now, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.